Hi, my name is Dr. Maria Trakis and I'm a physical therapist at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine and today I'll be discussing with you multiple sclerosis. <clears throat> so what are the objectives of this talk? Basically we're going to go over what MS is, we're going to discuss the incidence, causes, and risk factors, some of the types of multiple sclerosis, we're going to review the signs and symptoms of the disease, discuss medical treatment, and then talk a little bit about physical therapy considerations. What is multiple sclerosis? It's basically an autoimmune disorder that affects the central nervous system, namely the brain and spinal cord. It affects women greater than men, and it's commonly diagnosed between the ages of 20 and 40, with the prevalence being between 2 and 150 per 100,000. So MS is caused by damage to the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is basically a fatty covering that allows nerve impulses to be traveling through the cell, through the nerve cell. Damage causes nerve signals to slow down or stop. Nerve damage is caused by inflammation, which occurs when the body's immune system attacks itself. This can occur along any area of the optic nerve, the brain, or the spinal cord. So what are some of the causes of MS? Basically, the causes are unknown. It's most commonly thought that they're caused by a virus or a gene defect. However, it is thought that environmental factors may play a role. The risk does increase if you have a family history of MS or if you live in the, a part of the world where the risk is more common. What are some types? There are four that are the main ones, relapsing remitting, secondary progressive, primary progressive, and progressive relapsing. So the first one I'll talk about is relapsing remitting. Basically it has unpredictable relapses that are followed by periods of months to years of relative quiet, also known as a remission, with no new signs of disease activity at that point. Deficits suffered during attacks may either resolve or leave some sequelae. This is typically the initial course in about 80% of patients with MS. About 50% of patients with this type of MS will develop secondary progressive within 10 years. Secondary progressive, on the other hand, is characterized by progression of disability with rare, rare relapses. Disability typically does not fade between cycles. In primary progressive, there's a continuous gradual decline in physical abilities rather than relapses. And this is about 10 to 20% of individuals that are diagnosed with MS. The final one is primary, um, progressive relapsing. So this is basically characterized by a steady decline in abilities with sporadic attacks. This is a rarer form of MS. So what are the symptoms of MS? They are very varied and they're based on the location of the lesions as well as the severity of the damage. Episodes can last for days, weeks, or months. Episodes usually alternate with periods of reduced or no symptoms. Symptoms can occur in many parts of the body and are typically based on the location of the damage, whether it's in the brain or the spinal cord. So some symptoms include loss of balance, muscle spasm, numbness, abnormal sensations in any area of the body. You can have weakness in arms or legs, coordination difficulties, tremors, and weakness. And fatigue is typically one of the most common and most bothersome symptoms reported by patients that are diagnosed with MS. So there are also symptoms. Sometimes people can have a hard time initiating urination. They feel like they have to go very frequently or often incontinence. Some visual symptoms do include double vision, some eye discomfort, uncontrollable rapid eye movements, vision loss, and sometimes blurry vision. Some additional symptoms can include decreased attention span, poor judgment, memory loss, difficulty reasoning or problem solving, depression, dizziness and balance problems, and also hearing loss. There are also some sexual symptoms as well as speech and swallow difficulties. Sometimes speech is slurred or difficult to understand and sometimes patients may have chewing or swallowing difficulties. So what are the criteria for diagnosing someone with MS? There are no symptoms, physical findings, or laboratory tests that by themselves help to determine if a patient has MS. Doctors use several strategies. So they take a careful medical history, perform a neurologic examination, and use various tests including MRIs, evoked potentials, and spinal fluid analysis. So MRI is currently the best imaging technology for detecting MS plaques or scarring, and it can differentiate old lesions from newer ones. 
A normal MRI, however, does not rule out the possibility of someone having MS. 5% of people who are confirmed to have MS do not initially have lesions on their MRIs. So in order to make a diagnosis, the doctor must find damage in at least two separate areas of the central nervous system, brain, spinal cord, or optic nerves. They have to find evidence that the damage, uh, damage occurred at least one month, month apart. And they also have to rule out all other possible diagnoses. So the second test is evoked potentials. So it basically is a test that measures the electrical activity of the, of the brain in response to stimulation of specific sensory nerve pathways. So these tests are able to detect the slowing of electrical conduction that is caused by demyelination. It can help to confirm the diagnosis by allowing the physician to identify a second event that didn't cause any clinical symptoms or was otherwise not apparent. The final one is a cerebrospinal fluid analysis. So they basically, they take a little bit of the cerebrospinal fluid and they are looking for levels of certain immune system proteins. Research has shown that the presence of oligoclonal bands is found in patients with, that have MS. And these bands basically indicate an immune response within the central nervous system. And about 90 to 95 percent of people with MS are found to have these bands. The doctor will typically also conduct some blood tests to rule out diagnoses that may cause similar symptoms, such as Lyme's disease, collagen vascular diseases, and also AIDS. So what are some of the treatment options for these patients? There is currently no cure for MS, but there are effective treatment options that are available to help modify the disease course, treat exacerbations, manage symptoms, improve function and safety, and also provide emotional support. So in terms of treating exacerbations, these exacerbations are caused by inflammation in the central nervous system. Severe exacerbations are most commonly treated with high-dose corticosteroids, which help to reduce inflammation. In terms of managing symptoms, the symptoms can be highly variable and range from mild to severe. Most can typically be successfully managed with strategies that include medicines as well as rehab, which can include physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech, or cognitive remediation. So in terms of physical therapy, rehab is a critically important component um, to comprehensive quality health care for patients that have MS, and this can be beneficial at all stages in the process. Typically, we focus on function. We're designing programs to help improve and maintain a patient's ability to perform both effectively and safely. Rehab professionals tend to focus on overall fitness, energy conservation, as well as addressing accessibility and mobility problems. Physical therapy can be helpful at lessening secondary symptoms. It can help with, with issues with balance, lack of coordination, fatigue, pain, immobility, weakness, and poor posture. Physical therapy can be instrumental in helping patients to improve their activities of daily living, walking, getting up and down from a chair, negotiating a flight of, stair of stairs. The goal of physical therapy is basically to improve a patient's independence and quality of life by improving their movement and function as well as trying to relieve their pain. So what are some implications for physical therapy? Although exercise can ease the symptoms, it's certainly important to take certain precautions. You definitely do not want to over, overwork or work to fatigue. This can strain an already compromised muscular system. Also, many patients with MS are sensitive to heat, so patients may notice that their symptoms reappear or become worse when their body heat rises. So some tips on ways to avoid overheating is to not exercise during hot times of the day, so typically between 10 and 2. Make sure to drink plenty of cool fluids and ideally become aware of your body. So stop exercising if you notice any symptoms that were not present before exercise. Swimming and water aerobics are really great alternatives to help keep cool while you do exercise. So in conclusion, MS affects all patients differently. An accurate diagnosis is imperative for treatment and physical therapy is an essential part of the rehab process and it's helpful for overall functioning and improving quality of life in all stages of the disease process and exercise is beneficial however the patient must be cautious and listen to their body at all times. Thank you.